The Poor Last Years of Johnny Weismuller, Heartbreaking Ending Johnny Weismuller was born Janos Peter Weismuller on June 2, 1904 in the small Pennsylvania mining town of Winber, near Johnstown, the son of recent immigrants from Eastern Europe. The Weismullers did not linger long in Winber, where Johnny's father toiled in the coal mines to scratch out an existence for his family. By 1908 they had relocated to Chicago, where Weismuller's father owned and operated a neighborhood tavern while his mother cooked in the city's famous Turn Verain restaurant. Johnny was enrolled in St. Michael's Parochial School. He later attended Chicago's Menier Public School but quit after completing the eighth grade when his father died of tuberculosis, probably contracted during his years as a coal miner in Pennsylvania. To help support his family, Weismuller worked as a bellhop and elevator operator at Chicago's Plaza Hotel. In his spare time, he and younger brother Peter, both avid swimmers, joined the Stanton Park Pool, where Johnny won all the junior swim meets in which he competed. At the age of 12, he lied about his age to win a berth on the local YMCA swim team. During the summer, he spent every spare moment at Chicago's Oak Street Beach, where he and Peter pulled 20 people from the waters of Lake Michigan after a boating accident. Only 11 of those they rescued survived the. Not long after the death of his father, Weismuller came under the influence of a new father figure when he began to train at the Illinois Athletic Club under the guidance of William Big Bill Bachrock, already famous as the trainer of several Olympic swimming champions. When Weismuller asked Bachrock to train him, Big Bill laid out his conditions for doing so. Swear that you'll work a year with me without question, and it'll take you on. You won't swim against anybody. You'll just be a slave, and you'll hate my guts, but in the end you just might break every record there is. Bachrock's promise seems strangely prophetic. In Weismuller's first major competition, the 1921 Amateur Athletic Union Outdoor Championship, he handily won his very first race, the 50-yard freestyle swim. But that was just the beginning. Over the next three years, he won every race he entered. In the run-up to the 1924 Olympic Games in Paris, 20-year-old Weismuller looked unbeatable. He was already the world record holder for the 100-meter freestyle. In Paris he would compete with the defending Olympic champion, Duke Kahanamoku who also represented the United States, and his younger brother, Sam. Weismuller won the race, finishing in 59 seconds flat, winning the gold medal, followed closely by Duke and Sam, who took the silver and bronze medals, respectively. Two days before the 100-meter freestyle event in Paris, Weismuller had taken gold in the 400-meter freestyle race. Later in the day of his 100-meter win, he swam as part of the winning U.S. team in the 800-meter relay. Weismuller left Paris with three gold medals around his neck. Four years later at the Summer Games in Amsterdam, he carried the American flag at the opening ceremonies and went on to repeat his wins in the 100-meter freestyle and the 800-meter relay for a total of five gold medals at the two Olympics. Throughout the 1920s, Weismuller was invincible in amateur competition winning 36 national individual AAU championships and 67 world championships. In 1924 he set a world record in the 100-meter freestyle, finishing in 57.4 seconds, and became the first swimmer to break the one-minute mark. His record in this event lasted for a decade. He was named American Swimmer of the Year in 1922, won the Helms Trophy in 1923, and was elected to the Helms Swimming Hall of Fame in 1949. In 1929 he appeared in his first film, making a cameo appearance as himself in glorifying the American girl. The following year he teamed with writer Clarence Bush to produce his first book, Swimming the American Crawl and also wrote two articles for the Saturday Evening Post. The early 1930s brought a second career for Weismuller who in 1932 made his debut as Edgar Rice Burroughs' Tarzan in the film version of Tarzan the Ape Man, opposite Maureen O'Sullivan, who played Jane. 
For Weismuller, it was just the first of 12 Tarzan films he starred in over the next decade and a half. Of all of the Tarzan films with or without Weismuller in the leading role, The Swimming Champion's second outing, Tarzan and His Mate, is widely considered the best. A Compelling Romance, the 1934 film, directed by Cedric Gibbons and Jack Conway, co-starred Maureen O'Sullivan as Jane. Although the storyline at first glance might seem a trifle hokey, the on-screen chemistry between Weismuller and O'Sullivan is by far the most effective of all their screen pairings. The performances of both Weismuller and O'Sullivan in this film are by far the best of all the Tarzan movies they made together. When Weismuller had grown too old to don Tarzan's trademark loincloth, he took on the screen persona of Jungle Jim for another 12 films, running from the late 1940s through 1953. Although he appeared in a handful of films after the last of the Jungle Jim movies, his career in motion pictures was effectively over by the mid-1950s. Leaving Hollywood behind, Weismuller returned to Chicago where he launched his own swimming pool company and lent his name to assorted other business ventures, including health food stores and cocktail lounges. Hardly the world's sharpest businessman, he got himself into some unfortunate business deals, largely because of his inherent naivete. Weismuller's choices in the business arena cost him dearly, draining away much of his earnings. In the mid-1960s, Weismuller moved to Florida to manage the International Swimming Hall of Fame in Fort Lauderdale. In 1973, he headed west to Las Vegas and worked for a time as a greeter at the MGM Grand Hotel. Beginning in the mid-1970s, Weismuller's health began to deteriorate significantly. Weismuller was married five times and had three children. Sadly, after suffering a series of strokes, he and his wife moved to Acapulco, Mexico, where he died of pulmonary edema on January 20, 1984. Goodbye Johnny Weismuller.